thanks to Anchor for hosting this podcast. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. They'll distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your podcast too with no minimum listenership. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. Creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1653, The Stages of Financial Management, part one, by Andrea Joy of savingjoyfully.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I serenade you with the sweet sounds of personal finance knowledge from some of the best blogs on the planet, with the author's permission, of course. Are you loving Optimal Finance Daily? Why not share with a friend today? Invite them to join the party by sending them a link to oldpodcast.com. And while they're there, they can check out our five other shows on topics like personal development, health, and relationships. Now today I have a bit of a longer post, so I'll read the first half today and then we'll finish the rest for you tomorrow. So with that, let's dive into the first half and start optimizing your life. The Stages of Financial Management, Part 1, by Andrea Joy of SavingJoyfully.com. Have you ever thought about the process of understanding personal financial management? We all know that financial management is not something we're just born knowing. Personal financial management is a process that must be learned and understood. So how do people learn to manage their finances properly? In learning to manage our finances, I believe we learn in stages, which we progress through much like the human growth process. The stages of financial management. Spending some time with my toddler daughter recently had me thinking about this process. I've watched my toddler daughter as she learns and reacts to everything. It's cool to see how she learns and grows in so many areas. Her speech as she learned to talk, recognizing cues, and growing physically and emotionally. While watching her responses and the way she's progressing, I've begun to realize that the same can relate to the stages of financial management. We do not begin to understand personal financial management overnight. Many of you have probably learned to understand your finances over years of experiences and insight gained through those experiences. Just like a child grows into adulthood through experiences and with an education along the way, we have learned the right way to handle our money. While learning to manage our finances, we go through stages in our development, just like children do. Financial management is not, however, something that we naturally understand. It requires an understanding of our finances and an education on how to properly handle them. Sometimes this education is provided through traditional education, but often it comes after difficult lessons learned while mismanaging our finances. Stages of financial management. Stages of development and financial management are similar to our stages of development as we grow. Most are learned through maturity and better decision-making. This does not happen naturally. It happens as we gain education, experience, and good decision-making skills. How to recognize the stages of financial management. The baby stage. 100% dependent on others and no responsibility. No understanding of money or financial management the child stage. In the child stage, you know that money exists. You don't manage your own money because you have none that you earn. The teenager stage, trying to be independent and self-sufficient and making mistakes, but hopefully not big ones. Ideally, learning lessons through your financial mistakes help you progress to the next stage. The adulting stage, beginning to make the right decisions, completely independent, beginning to properly manage debt and income. The mature stage, working your plan consistently, you have a budget, you have savings, no debt or manageable debt, good credit, prioritizing investing, savings, and good financial choices. My journey through the stages of financial management. I found myself stuck between teenager and adulting for many years. I was 23 years old and buried in debt before I even knew how to properly manage my finances. At that time, I was a college student with student loans, multiple maxed out credit cards, and poor money management skills. 
Then one day I met my husband as I was in the midst of this financial mess that I had created for myself. I was working multiple jobs just to pay my bills, attending college in hopes of a better paying career someday, and just feeling overwhelmed. No matter how hard I worked and how much more money I made, I never seemed to be that much better off. One evening, I confessed to my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, how much debt I had. Instead of running away and judging me for my poor decisions, he kindly explained to me that my budget was the issue and not so much a lack of income. Growing up, I never heard positive things about money and had not learned how to properly manage my own money. I hadn't been taught the value of saving, how to pay bills, balance my checking account, or create a budget. I witnessed many arguments between my parents regarding my parents' overspending and the financial stress my dad was feeling as he tried to manage their budget. I didn't understand the correct response to struggling to pay my bills and was handling my situation the very best way I knew how. After that conversation with Jason, I still struggled, but I finally recognized the problem was not just the money I was not making. The real problem was my lack of understanding of managing the money that I was making. Sacrifice versus making the right financial choices. After my conversation with Jason, my husband, I began to understand the actual process of financial management much better. I realized that there was a process that I needed to follow to finally decrease my debt and improve my future. I would like to tell you that at this time, I progressed to the next stage immediately. Sadly, I did not progress that quickly. I began to learn and understand, but I still resisted some of what I knew needed to happen. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled The Stages of Financial Management by Andrea Joy of savingjoyfully.com. I enjoyed the focus here on the management of money because when I was first wrapping my head around my finances, I had no idea that my real problem was money management. For a long time, I thought I had an income problem. And if I just made more money, I could easily pay off debt and start saving and investing. And while this may have an element of truth for some people, meaning it is totally possible that you have an income problem, this was not the case for me. Once I started questioning my belief about my income being the problem and took a hard look at my spending, things really started to shift. I started to see the gap between my income and expenses as much more important than my income and took steps to increase and then protect that gap. That was really a paradigm shift for me. I had to recognize that if I couldn't manage $1,000, then I also couldn't manage a million dollars, and I wasn't gonna suddenly learn how to handle money by having more of it. This is why 70% of people who win the lottery or receive a large windfall of money go bankrupt within a few years, according to the National Endowment for Financial Education. Another way to put it would be that financial literacy is not a side effect of wealth. Rather, wealth is a side effect of financial literacy. Well, that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day and a great weekend. And I'll see you on the Sunday show tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.